in order to be a good man, you need to be ready to help others in bad situations. This is up to you. As a man, you need to know how to fight. You need to know how to defend yourself so that you can help others that cannot take care of themselves. This is your duty as a good man. And unfortunately, this is not the case. Most people now do not see that as being a responsibility because there could be consequences to their actions. There could be something bad that's going to come out of helping people. And Daniel Penny is the perfect, perfect example of this. This is the Nico Lagan Show. Warning. Warning. This show contains explicit content. Listener discretion is advised. Real. Real. Raw. Raw. And shooting you straight. This is the Nico Lagan Show. And now your host, Nico. Awesome. It seems that we are good everywhere. Now, it is the duty of a good man to be a protector. A good man must be ready to help others in time of crisis but what happens when a man with good intentions ends up killing somebody welcome to the nico lagan show i'm your host nico lagan you know i i know it, this for a fact that you've heard about this up to now like you have heard that what happened on may 1st that uh daniel uh, daniel penny killed or Daniel Penny choked Jordan Neely to death in a New York subway train. I know you've heard of this. Um, I know it's everywhere in the news. Everybody's talking about it. And I understand why. This is exactly why I want to talk about this today. And let's review what we know. So Penny choked Neely. He ended up, he, he went unconscious. He ended up dying. On May 3rd, the medical examiner determined that the cause of death was homicide by strangulation. So the neck hold or the neck choke, as they call it, would have been the reason he died, the compression of the neck hold. Last Friday, May 2nd, uh, May 12th, Penny surrendered to police on charges of manslaughter. This is what we know. This, These are the fact, unbiased fact up to now now one of the things that i noticed from the um, from the news outlet right now is that they're painting neely as an angel they're describing him as a street performer that changed people's life back in 2011 but the biggest issue that i see that people are not talking about right now is the mental aspect of things is the mental illness that neely had it's I don't know if ironic is a good word, but right now it's a bit ironic that, that May is meant is uh, mental health awareness. But we will see today, and this is the, some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today, is the fact that Neely was not an angel. Neely was not this... I don't want to use the word normal because normal is not a great word, but there was some pre-existing issues with Neely that needs to be addressed. This whole situation needs to be put into context to explain who Neely was, who is Penny, what happened on May 1st, and why did it happen? And is there somebody to blame for this? Is P Penny, is Penny to blame for what happened? Or could it be that the problem resides somewhere else? And this is the conversation that should be had right now. This is what people should be talking about. Unfortunately, this is not the case. We are seeing this as one man killing another. This is what you see in the news. But this the narrative needs to change because it is completely, completely incorrect. Now, let's look at who Jordan Neely was. Then we're gonna we're gonna look at who 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 Daniel Penny is. So as much as the news is trying to paint you Neely as an angel, Neely, it, Neely was far from being one. So let's see into more details what I'm talking about. So Neely was a 30-year-old man who grew up in Bayonne out of uh, New Jersey. Tragically, his mother was killed when he was 14 years old. They literally found her body in a suitcase and... As per her aunt, as per his aunt, sorry, he developed depression, schizophrenia, schizophrenia and PTSD 
as per what happened. I think this is normal. Like this is if if your mother, you're 14 years old, and somebody finds that your mother was murdered by a loved one, and they find her body in a suitcase, no wonder that leaves damage. Like there's no fucking doubt in my mind that this will leave damage, long lasting damage. So schizophrenia, PTSD, and depression were what followed the event that took place in 2007 when Neely was 14 years old. Following this, Neely was put in foster care. In this is this is the Neely that the news is depicting for you right now. This is who I'm going to be talking about now. Is that he was a local known impersonator of uh, Michael Jackson. He was always performing in Times Square in subway stations and he is described as a talented dancer. The part that they don't share with you, the part that they don't speak about is the fact that Neely was arrested 42 times. As per a police officer of the NYPD, he was arrested 42 different times. Although most of the times he were arrested were for minor violations, there are still three things that he did that are not minor at all. He unprovokedly assaulted three women in the New York subway stations. In 2015, he pled guilty to child endangerment after dragging a seven-year-old girl down a street. So, so listen to this. In 2015, he was he found he was found guilty to child endangerment of a seven-year-old dragging a seven-year-old girl down a street. And at the time of his death, he was subject to a 15 months alternative to, inter to incarceration. After pleading guilty in February 2023 to felony assault of a 77-year-old woman who he punched in the face as he was exiting a subway station back in November 2021. He broke her nose. He fractured her orbital bone as part of that incident. So we're so so we're we're, we're talking about a guy here that's been arrested 42 times. That three times he was found uh, he attacked women. One of these times would have said was a 67 year old woman who he broke his no her nose as well as her orbital bone and coming from the fighting game coming from a guy that, that has a lot of martial art background it's not that hard to broken to break a nose it's not that hard to break an orbital bone but those are nasty injuries like your nose will take forever to heal if it ever heals properly especially at 67 years old you're not going to heal properly from this and your orbital bone is literally the bone that is right under your eye under your eye socket and you can break it you can probably break the same you can probably break the nose and the orbital bone with the same punch but the point of the matter is that those are serious injuries they're not he didn't break a finger here he broke the nose broke the orbital bone because he punched a 67 year old woman when exiting a subway and basically what they're saying is that he was he was found guilty for this and somehow instead of being in prison somehow instead of being somewhere in a mental institution where i believe he he should have been he was part a, of a 15 month sentence alternative to incarceration this is the program that he was part of so keep that in mind when we're thinking about accusing people out there and not looking at the problem for what it is we're talking about a, a very a, a criminal with a very long rap sheet that should have been in prison but somehow was still on the street as part of a 15 months alternative program he at the time of his arrest at the time of his death sorry he had a warrant issued for his arrest after he missed a court date so you know this is a guy that somehow was on the street this is a guy that would that was supposed to be in a treatment facility he left that treatment facility and at the time of his arrest was under 
warrant. Like he had a warrant issued for him. So this is a guy that should have been in prison in a mental institution or somewhere else to where he could be looked at and monitored and make sure that everything is okay with him. But somehow he was on the street. This is who Jordan Neely was. It's also worth mentioning. There's something else that I found that you will find very interesting is that as per an outreach worker, because in New York, there's a lot of outreach workers that try to help homelessness and the people that are unfortunately homeless. But as per one of those outreach workers, Neely was a heavy user of synthetic marijuana. I don't know if you're aware of this, but schizophrenia and marijuana do not go together at all, at all, at all. Those marijuana is to be avoided at all costs if you're schizophrenic. And believe me, I know what I'm talking about. First hand, I can tell you about this. Both of them do not work with each other. The reason being, synthetic marijuana can invoke psychosis in regular people. So it is prone to create psychosis in non-mental health affected individuals. So imagine what it does to a schizophrenic. It is a no-no. And you can see in the, the description of this video, or at least the the full podcast, I will put links about what I'm talking about because there's a lot of studies that came out to talk about exactly to describe what I'm talking about right now. Like if we take this one, for example, it is established that cannabis consumption cannot, cannot only trigger transient psychos psychosis episodes, but also predisposes for the, the development of lasting paranoid schizophrenia. This is not only so basically all it means is that not only can it create psychosis but it can over time create schizophrenia so imagine somebody that already has schizophrenia that is heavily consuming synthetic marijuana now this is who jordan neely was now let's take a look at who daniel penny was so daniel penny is the guy accused of murder right now Daniel grew up in a middle-class fam military family. Uh, he's out of Long Island. For, for his time in the high school, he was an athlete. He played lacrosse. He was very good at lacrosse from what I look like. He served in the military for four years as a Marine. He did two tours. He was uh, honorably discharged back in 2021. This is about what I can find about him. Like, I cannot... The only negative thing that I can find about Penny is what's coming out of Neely's family and Neely's lawyer. I cannot find anything negative right now as per Daniel Penny. Star athlete in high school, grew up from what it seemed like a very middle class normal family, served the military right out of high school and was honorably discharged back in 2021. This is the person we're talking about here. Now, what actually happened that night? Turns out that on May 1st, according, well, on May 1st, this happened into an F, like onto an F train in Manhattan. As per one Alberto Vasquez, which is the guy that recorded the whole incident. I'm sure you've seen the video. I don't feel the need to show the video here, but I know that you've seen the video. So this is the guy that recorded it. As per the guy that recorded the video, Neely boarded the F train and started yelling. This is what he was yelling. I do not have food. I don't have a drink. I'm fed up. I don't mind going to jail and getting life in prison. I am ready to die. He then took off his black jacket that he was wearing. Witnesses also report that Neely was throwing trash at some of the passengers. After Neely threw his jacket down, Penny walked to Neely from behind and placed him into a chokehold where he dragged him to the ground. Vasquez says that Neely did not interact with Penny prior to Penny doing something. According to police, witnesses said that Neely was acting in a hostile and erratic manner. 
telling riders that he would hurt anyone on the train. Let that sink in for a second. We have a guy, we have a guy that's been with a history of mental illness, a heavy user of narcotics while being schizophrenic, with a history of PTSD, stepping into a train, yelling at people that he's ready to die and he doesn't care if he goes to prison. We're talking about a guy with a rap sheet longer than my arm with 42 arrests, which at least three of them were on women, where he attacked women. And then you have a guy called Daniel Penny, ex-military, decide to take, to take the situation onto his hand. Like, as a good man, he decides to say, you know what, this is not acceptable behavior. I will take it upon myself and do something about this situation. Because, you know, look at us, look at the society that we live in now. You, the average person would have seen this happen in front of them. They would have taken their cell phone out and they would have started recording for their social media so that they can get famous afterwards. But it is not common anymore. Most men out there will not take it upon themselves to do something about a situation like this. And believe me, I know what I'm talking about. I've posted many videos where I suggested that men today should be, in order to be a good man, you need to be ready to help others in bad situations. This is up to you. As a man, you need to know how to fight. You need to know how to defend yourself so that you can help others that cannot take care of themselves. This is your duty as a good man. And unfortunately, this is not the case. Most people now do not see that be as being a responsibility because there could be consequences to their actions. There could be something bad that's going to come out of helping people. And Daniel Penny is the exact situation, is the perfect, perfect example of this. You got a guy that took a situation, a bad situation, and as a trained Marine, decided to do something about it. This is the situation. We have a known criminal that is that has a, a warrant on his name that has a fucking long rap sheet that has has attacked women that's been found guilty multiple times yet who's in fucking prison right now daniel penny has been arrested my apologies he's not in prison because he was released on bail but we got a guy that is accused of murder manslaughter my apologies we have a guy that is accused of manslaughter because he decided to do something about it. And this is what it's all about. This is what this whole situation is about. A good man doing something with a tragic end. Is it unfortunate that that Neely died? Absolutely. That shouldn't have happened. In it should not be what happened in this situation. Because for the people out there that do not know about jiu-jitsu, that's never been training, that's never been put in a chokehold, it is worth for me talking about what happened here because I guarantee you this type of choke is not the intent. The intent to kill does not come with this choke. This is a choke that you see in, in Brazilian jiu-jitsu classes day in and day out. This is something that watch the UFC, watch combat sports where there's grappling involved. You will see a rear naked choke. People get choked out all the fucking time. I've been choked out. I've seen other people get choked out. You go limb, you fall, and boop, it's okay. Because the thing to remember, this is not a choke that will kill, that, that should kill somebody. This is what we call a blood choke. So basically, you have, basically what the choke does is by using your arm, you're using your biceps and your form to apply pressure on arteries that carry blood from the heart to the brain. And the whole point is to block the blood supply to the brain, shut off the brain, and you simply lose consciousness. But this is not an air choke. This is not something that is applied to destroy the trachea. It's not something that's supposed to cause permanent damage. It's some. It, it's a choke that I've been put in so many fucking times. Does it hurt your neck after a while? Absolutely. Because if you know what you're doing, you're trying to fight it, it's going to end up hurting your neck. But this is meant to cut the blood supply to the brain, shut off the lights. That's it. And 
go look at the video and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Because what he did is what Neely, uh, not Neely, but what Penny did is he actually tried to control the situation by just turning off the lights. Basically, he wanted to put Neely in a situation where he was unconscious and then the threat was taken care of. He stayed with Neely after he choked him out. You can clearly see in the video that he, he actually moves Neely to his side in order for him to make sure that if he vomits, he's not going to swallow the vomit. He's not going to swallow his tongue while he's unconscious. So you, you clearly, in the video, you clearly see a man that tried, that, that took control of a bad situation, that used a very safe technique to subdue an individual that is violent, that is threatening people on that train. And now he's facing manslaughter. I want to say this. I want to say this as a martial artist. I want to say this as a man that believes that good men will defend other people in bad situation. I would have done a lot worse than him. As a striker, as much as I love Marsh, as long as I love MMA, as much as I love uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and I fully understand how important knowing Jiu Jitsu and how you can apply it in a real life situation. And Daniel Penny did exactly this. I'm a striker. I would have fucking knocked him out. If I saw somebody act like that in a train where my girlfriend is there, where other people are there, other people that don't know how to defend themselves, that are in a situation where they don't know what to do, I would have fucking knocked them out. I would have hurt that guy more than what Daniel Penny did because this is what I do. I believe in protecting people. If you own the skills, if you are capable of doing so, it is your fucking job to help others. And that's what Daniel Penny did. So it could have been a lot fucking worse. And in my opinion, from the videos that I've seen, from the information that is out there right now, he did the fucking right thing. There's He did not do anything wrong. And I want to say this again. It is fucking unfortunate that Neely died. This is not, this is not right that he died. It's very fucking unfortunate. It is very tragic that he died. But at the same time, he was doing things that he shouldn't be doing. Think about it. He was in a situation where he threatened people. People weren't doing anything. So he decided, Daniel Penny decided to take it upon, them, upon himself and do something about it. So keep that in mind when you're listening to the news that there's a lot of things out there that are taken out of context that are just out there to divide us. This is not a right against left. This is not a racial matter. The fact that Neely was black and that Penny is white should not matter at all. This is not what this is about. This is about a very bad situation where a man acted in a violent way, a man that had priors to acting violently, and you have another guy that took it upon himself to do something about this situation. Do not let the media fool you in thinking that this is a racial problem, that this is a political problem. It is not. It is simply a man that did something wrong and another man that did something to defend others. It is fucking tragic that it ended the way it did. It's fucking tragic that Penny is looking at manslaughter. And from memory, we're talking about a sentence that could go from five years to 15 years. At least this is what the lawyer of the Neely family is looking for. And it's crazy. It's absolutely fucking nuts that we are looking at this situation. But, but, there's a big but. I'm happy to say that there are people out there that are trying to make this right. There are people out there that are trying to help Penny. Governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis being one of them. He called Penny a good Samaritan. He is, um, he, he, pus he put out a post or a tweet yesterday saying, we must defend the Soros funded DAs, stop the left pro criminal agenda and take back the streets for the law-abiding citizen. We stand with good Samaritans like Daniel Penny. Let's show this Marine that America got his back. This is beautiful to me because, again, Neely 
The, the problem that we're seeing with Neely is a lot bigger than what we think. The problem in this situation is not a Penny versus Neely problem. The problem is the fact that the, bro- the system is broken. The fact that Neely should have never been in the street. He had a warrant for his arrest. He was supposed to be in a program where they could monitor him. He was not supposed to be on the street. A guy like that should have either been in prison, in a mental health institution, or somewhere equivalent to take care of this man. There was clearly something wrong with this man, and the system failed him. This is not a black against white. This is not a left against right. It is simply that the the system in which we currently live in is fucking broken and we need to look at the pro at the programs that are ran by the city of new york by the programs that are read that, that are actually provided by the state of new york the system itself is the issue we need to stop pointing our nasty fingers at the individuals that fall that, that become a victim. Because in this case, I see two victims. I see Neely as a victim and I see Penny as a victim. We have a system that has caused two victims and we're blaming each other. We're blaming the two victims. People are, are saying Penny shouldn't have done this. Other people are saying Nell, uh, Neely shouldn't have done this. And then you have people like me that are in the middle saying, listen, call a spade a spade. We look at what Neely was and it doesn't look good we're talking about a guy that should have never been on the street and then you look at a guy like penny which everything that i could find was positive i could not find anything negative outside of what the da and uh the neely camp is saying all the rest was beautiful stuff all very very positive things about him so we really are seeing a clash a clash between individual and the system and we're blaming the individual for being victim of that system this is what we need to look at this is what we need to start fixing is the system let's stop blaming each other for what we're seeing right now let's stop letting media let's stop let's stop letting media separate us on issues like this I've said it again, and I will say it again right now. This is not a white against black. It's not a racial problem. It is not a left against right. This is individual like you and I, everybody out there. This is where the issue is. Is the system's broken, and yet we are we keep on letting them divide us instead of all admitting that this is the problem and that we need to fix the fucking system. On that note, I want to thank every single one of you out there, everybody that interacts with my, my content, everybody that that comments, that likes. Even if you don't like my, com- my, my content, thank you. I'm very grateful for every single one of you. I want to remind you that my content is often getting blocked on social media. People, the, the social media platforms don't like what I say. So... I do have a blog where I am uncensored. And if you guys want to encourage me, if you guys want to see what I do outside of social media, go see my website, nicolagan.com. You can look under the blog and my, I will write an article about what I did, what I said today. So you can find that there on that note. Remember, never forget that the world has changed one man at a time and that it takes, but one man to change the world. Peace out. You've been listening to The Nico Lagan Show. Nico has been involved in the martial arts for 20 years. He's a Muay Thai coach, focus coach, podcaster, and sought-after public speaker. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and we hope you've gotten some useful and practical information. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Coach Nico Lagan and on YouTube at The Nico Lagan Show. See you next time.